Last year, I made a video about the history of Super Mario Sunshine World Record speedruns. I exclusively covered the most obligatory and competitive category, any percent, beating the game as fast as possible with no restrictions, outside of cheating. But of course, additional categories offer different requirements for their completion. For instance, if the only way to speedrun A Link to the Past was through its currently 1.5 minute long any percent, it would become stale pretty quickly. Other categories introduce fresh ways of speedrunning a game and offer significant replay value. So, what is the most notable of Mario Sunshine's alternative categories? Well that would be 100%, currently referred to as 120 shines. For those who've experienced Mario Sunshine during its initial release, the idea of 100%ing the game was mystifying. This would surely be impossible without some sort of strategy guide or online walkthrough. How many shines are in this game anyway? I mean, this GameFAQs walkthrough says there's 120, but I can't help but notice all these rumors about a 121st shine sprites. I've heard about getting a bonus shine if you defeat Manta and have 5 HP left. Is this true? Because if it isn't, somebody's busted. In the early 2000s, these kind of hoaxes were rampant, and a supposed 121st shine sprite was no exception. That being said, there are only 95 physically collectible shines, and one that you obtain from defeating Bowser. So where do the other 24 come from? Scattered throughout Isle Delfino are 240 blue coins. For every 10 blue coins you trade with the Tanuki family, you receive a shine spread. Nintendo had the foresight to allow you to trade in all your blue coins at the same time, effectively collecting 24 shines in a single purchase. This immediately became a staple for speedruns. Don't bother trading in your blue coins until you have all of them. Just to be certain that you didn't miss anything, Nintendo will reward you with a... postcard. But let's be honest, getting all 120 shine sprites in a single segment speedrun was just a pipe dream. No one was actually going to do it. Then one day, someone did it. The year was 2007, YouTube looked something like this, That's Mama Luigi to you, Mario. and a player named Doodan became the trailblazer for Mario Sunshine 100% when SDA approved his single segment run of 5 hours and 10 minutes. Tackling this titan of a speedrun was purely a solo effort over the course of many months. He claims to have spent over a week coming up with ideas to minimize the travel time between blue coins, and even made maps of some of the levels to help visualize things. His strategies were mostly basic, and relatively safe, but some of his movement was surprisingly ahead of its time, like performing windmill wall kicks in Bianco Hills Episode 2. There were also strikingly archaic strats, like his method for Pianta Village Episode 4, in which he goes across the stage, places a barrel by the swimming pool entrance, runs back, then makes the chain shop run into the barrel? Okay. One reason in particular solidifies Dudan's run as a legendary speedrun in Sunshine history. Zero deaths. The thing that amazes me most about this entire run is that I did not die a single time. I've recorded several runs and I gave myself an allowance of five deaths. However, every other run I recorded broke that limit. My second best run had seven deaths. I just didn't feel comfortable submitting a run with so many deaths, so I kept trying. Somehow, some way, I didn't die a single time this time. That's something to be proud of in and of itself. Every secret stage has an additional red coin secret upon re-entry that allows you to obtain a second shine sprite. That would mean putting up with completing the slot machines and tile flipping in the casino twice. Also, while this amazing skip directly to the banana platform while riding Yoshi was known, it still meant having to ride one of the boats at a snail's pace to access the lily pad secret. These flow killers, combined with the length of the run, made for a daunting category. Back in early 09, Theoradel finished his segmented any percent run of 154. Later that same year, he decided to also tackle 100%, and continuing with the segmented format only made sense. He put in the work to make sure that this was a masterpiece, utilizing 43 segments and some tweaks to Dudan's routing. His run clocked in at 4.16.48. Theoradel cut nearly an hour off the single segment record, submitted his run to Speed Demo's archive, and got... Rejected. The horror. Apparently this run wasn't quite good enough for Maikuyama or some verifiers or referees or however SDA works. Basically, it came down to the fact that standards for segmented runs were much higher than those done in a single segment. The most common complaint? 
Segments 14, encapsulating the entirety of Pinna Park, arguably the most random and difficult stage in the whole run. That's pretty ambitious compared to his segmenting of individual episodes of Bianco Hills. The part that sticks out like a fat chick in a Victoria's Secret catalog is the balloon shooting at the end. The runner misses a ton of shots. I think it's because it's at the end of a long segment, but I believe he needs to practice this a lot more. It's awful. Okay, well, let me vouch for Theradel. In the case of Pinna 8, where precision is a huge factor, there was no way to prevent the rocket from firing higher or lower than usual. This gave every shot a pseudo-random element. The other glaring mistake was forgetting to turn Yoshi orange before trying to access the Pinna 6 secret level. Whoops. I contacted Theradel about why he didn't use more segments for Pinna Park. He stated that when he was making this speedrun, he felt that the time added for additional movement from the default plaza spawn back to the Pinna Cannon wasn't worth it. Though in hindsight, it was silly to emphasize that small time loss so much. That basically covers the early history of 100% Sunshine runs. Heading into 2011, a more modern scene and the era of live streaming speedruns began to emerge. Discoveries like the Pinna 1 cutscene skips, Yoshi skip, and Casino skip were added to the arsenal, along with one other major skip. Back in August of 2009, Nintendo Gatemer discovered how to skip the boats required to reach Lilypad Secret. You can clip through this building, then jump across the Out of Bounds plain until you reach the point where you can clip back in and walk below the water to the island. This trick must have fallen under the radar, as it wasn't used in Theradel's Segmented run. However, it is very possible that both of the world records set in 2011 did use this trick. There will never be any way of knowing, because both of these records, a 436 by Fax V2 and a 432 by Konku, don't have any available video. These runs were likely streamed on Nico Live, a Japanese streaming website, but it seems that neither of these recordings were archived. 120 shines would remain untouched for quite some time, until a year later, Inkiller, Akka in Kitten, gave it a shot. Hailing from the Netherlands, Inkiller spent a few weeks making his own route, using Dudan's SDA run as a baseline. He achieved a 425 on March 3rd of 2012. The philosophy behind Inkiller's route was pretty clear. Complete whatever is closest to you while maximizing how many shines you get from a single level visit. It's also crucial to complete Pinna Park early on, because unlocking Yoshi is directly tied to episode 4. The blue coins from bees, butterflies, and the clamber located on this wall all required Yoshi for their attainment. 100 coin shines can be completed in whatever episode you so choose, but some are better than others. They do force you out of the level, unlike Mario 64 where you can collect a 100 coin star and then continue on from there. To make matters worse, neither red or blue coins count toward your total. However, it is definitely worth collecting blue coins along the way whenever possible. Inkiller switched the episode for Gelato 100 coins from 8 to 2, and also changed Serena 100 coins from 3 to 4 to take advantage of the slot machines. Only a week later, Konku attained his second world record time of 421. He completed everything in the plaza requiring Yoshi in one go. This removes the need to find a fruit for the Yoshi egg located next to the left bell tower. Another improvement to the plaza was a faster way to reach the sewer blue coin near the corona entrance. By swimming up and down near this waterfall, you can bonk and end up in the sewer section below. The following week, Konku cut a little less than a minute off his time and got a particularly dank world record. An up-and-coming Japanese player named The Chicken brought a lot to the table. He improved the record by over 9 minutes with a run that had a total of 9 deaths in it, 4 of which were from the notoriously difficult Shell Secret. This was the first world record to include any sort of blue coin text box skip, which he performed by having this blue coin land on him during the Shine Git cutscene. While it may only appear for a half second if you're not using a memory card and mash through it, that's about 2 minutes dedicated solely to these text boxes. The Chicken was the first person to do a boatless pachinko entry, skip breaking the blocks in Serena 2 Reds, and utilize this precise wall kick for reaching the gold bird in Noki Bay. There was a very significant discovery made between the time of the Chicken's record and Endkiller's 40952 that he would go on to set in September. Up until mid-2012, people assumed that the only way to unlock the turbo and rocket nozzles in Nofino Plaza was to defeat both of the corresponding Shadow Marios. Well, it turns out that as long as you can climb the Shine 
gates without the rocket nozzle, these Shadow Marios can be entirely ignored. Once you unlock Corona Mountain from defeating Shadow Mario in all seven stages, you can enter and exit Corona to find that you've unlocked these nozzles automatically. Runners previously chose to lead a turbo unlock into completing the gold bird, and a rocket unlock into doing the lighthouse. Inkiller took something into consideration at a much earlier date than I honestly expected anyone to. And this is where routing gets complicated. Event cutscenes. Splitting up levels in such a way that you revisit them at least once equals more time spent moving between levels, which equals slow, right? Well, not necessarily. Every time something new is available in the Fino Plaza, a short cutscene will play. Skipping this cutscene as soon as possible makes it last for 3.1 seconds. There's a few methods of minimizing these cutscenes in early game, such as opening up Gelato right when it's unlocked. This will mean that no cutscenes will play after any additional shines you collect until you reach 10, at which point the event cutscene for unlocking Penna Park will begin to play. The granddaddy of skipping event cutscenes is that once you've exited Corona Mountain, these cutscenes will never play again. You've effectively reached Delfino Plaza's final state. Inkiller realized this and split up most stages into two or three parts. He entered Corona for the first time at only 67 shines, rather than the 90s scene in the Chickens 411. This meant a time save of over a minute, before subtracting the time loss from additional plaza movements, and some extra shine selection menu scrolling. Having had two sizable deaths in Miyako 6 Reds, and even losing his Yoshi in Rico 8, it was clear to Iced Windowsill that the record was very improvable. He felt that the 100% record was, quote, free, and wanted to prove it by beating it himself, and maybe even spark a friendly rivalry in the process. One notable strat that Ice developed is the first ship cycle route in Pinna 3. He heads directly to the first moving ship, and then later catches this high up blue coin when the ship does a complete rotation. He also figured out that you can spray this M while waiting for the Rico polluted piranha plant to reset itself. Like a boss! <laughs> oh, <Reckon. laughs> And then, faster than you could even say, Shine Git, the chicken cracked any hopes of a friendly competition when he dropped a speedrun of 4 hours flat. I know that I'm focusing a lot on the progression of routing in this video, but in all honesty, large improvements in execution and avoiding large mistakes can go a long way. None of these former records should be understated, however. This category undoubtedly needed people that were willing to get the ball rolling. Samurai Man picked up Mario Sunshine in July of 2012. In a matter of two months, he achieved a world record and the first sub 4 hour 100% speedrun. And that's it, guys. New world record. <laughs> this could only mean two things. Samu is a god gamer, but more importantly, 120 Shines had a lot of potential for improvements beyond what anyone could have previously imagined. Samu's route might have looked good on paper, but failed to take event cutscenes into account. Not that it mattered a whole lot, since his level of execution was clearly unmatched. He took a counterclockwise path for the Yoshi-specific blue coins to end up by the roof necessary for clipping out of bounds. Unfortunately, this might have happened. <laughs> He incorporated a strat found by Hidden Power 13 for the 100 coins of Noki Bay, a very flashy and effective way of getting from the ruins all the way to where the shine spawns. Lastly, he optimized fruit ladies by obtaining durians and pineapples at the same time. Take notes, by the way. <laughs> no, that's not a pineapple. The chicken kept up the competition by narrowly beating Samu's PB, but this would be a short lived victory. Samurai Man worked his way up from a 137 to a 134 in any percent, and after losing his 120 shines record, he decided to really go in on the category. He laid his sights on sub 3 hours and 50 minutes, and set one of the most incredible streaks in SMS speedrunning history October 23rd, October 24th, October 25th, and last, but most, October 26th. New world record, guys. Again. <laughs> Four days of new world records in a row, and over 10 minutes cut. He was the first person to implement Yoshi Skip into this category. The original sidestep setup was considered too inconsistent to be done so late into a speedrun. Not just once, but twice for the red coin variation. Samu found, from watching Mug 1991 do attempts, an alternative setup, back jump. 
he learned back jump, and never looked back. This was the first record to get a 35 seconds in-game time on Penalty Reds, reaching an earlier disappearing platform cycle. First cycle. He also had a solid grasp of maneuvering this clay boat in Corona Mountain. 120 Shines requires mastery of these controls because of the 9 blue coins surrounding the final platform. In case you haven't experienced this boat before, the controls are mutilated. And if you so much as scrape by something, well, you're toast. 2012 ended off with a 3.43 from Samurai Man. He may have solidified his lead, but the chicken would return to light a fire under his ass, coming within 20 seconds of the record on April 21st. Samu decided to make some updates to his approach. Not only did he remake his route, but he purchased the NTSCJ or Japanese version of the game. While only a minor advantage for any percent, NTSCJ has a huge advantage for 120 shines. Rolling the watermelon in Gelato 8 was a thing of the past because of a Japanese only method of Gelato Beach Skip discovered in 2012 by Mug. Furthermore, the Japanese version loads Delfino Plaza over half a second faster, and as you can imagine, there are a lot of these load times. The downsides of NCSCJ pale in comparison, with the stricter requirements for cleaning off Serena Beach, and the lack of some of the fruits located around Alfino Plaza. You may remember that Endkiller put a huge emphasis on skipping event cutscenes. It's true, Endkiller's route was ahead of its time. It was essentially lost in translation due to the stark uprise in both the Chicken and Samurai Man. Even though a lot of routing progress was lost, Samu made some beneficial steps in his 34110. He unlocks Rico and Gelato as soon as they're available, and enters Penna Park with only 12 shines. Samu beat his time by 2 seconds, but after a few more days of grinding, he achieved the first sub 3 hour 40 minute time. GG. It was a 338 despite some large mistakes. <sighs> <laughs> Samu briefly left the category to pursue a better any percent time, but there was a new European runner quickly on the rise. Oh, avoids both needles. Oh, oh, oh. checks it. Oh, oh yeah, yes. Nice. Stelzig knows what's up. Yes, he knows his edge card. The yeah. Danish lord himself, Stelzig. On June 21st, Stelzig swept up a third place time using a similar route to Samurai Man. He even lost a good 50 seconds from missing a Yoshi skip, a common occurrence when going for the precise sidestep method. Stelzig knew that he was capable of being number one, and that's exactly what he achieved on July 30th when he got a world record by over two minutes, a 336.22. Samu's new any percent record of 131.08 was timely, as it allowed him to start grinding 120 shines again. Sadly for Stelzig, his record would be very short-lived, as Samu would reclaim the record on literally the same day. Neither of the last two records were archived, as both players knew they had so much potential for improvements. Stelzig went back to the drawing board and changed many things, down to the very first movements after arriving in Delfino Plaza. With a clip behind the fruit stand, he collected these two sewer blue coins from the lower out of bounds plane. He was able to collect the blue coin below this bell tower right before the Statue Rising cutscene. With this, he wouldn't lose any time when luring Shadow Mario back to the statue to open up Bianco Hills. Speaking of Bianco Hills, he collected one of the blue coins in Episode 1 while theoretically not losing any time, using a spin spray for the second hit on the polluted piranha plants, then collecting this blue coin in the water right before the cutscene starts. He mitigated some luck in Pinna 2 by saving the furthest back blue coin for later during Pinna 100 coins. By dropping Yoshi between this basket and the wall, you can clip your way into the basket. Stelzig being the crafty man he is, recycled that fruit stand clip as a better way to get to the islands for Lilypad secret. This of course reverted the blue coins back to a clockwise order of collection. All of these techniques are demonstrated in his new record that he would achieve a little over a week after Samu's 334. That was a bad ending, but whatever man. Your turn, Samu. In a speedrun this long, slip-ups are inevitable, but minimizing mistakes is the key to getting a good run. And get a good run, Samu did, one week after Stelzig's 332. Sub 330 happened. Good. The first sub 330 speedrun using a few of Stelzig's findings. Your turn, Stelzig. With the exception of the intentional death in Corona, Samu didn't die a single time. I'd like to say he was the first one to do this, but oh yeah, that's right. 
Stelzig might have stirred up some competition, but Samurai Man was nothing short of a formidable force. Two months later, and after officially changing the name of the category from 100% to 120 shines, Stelzik did the unthinkable and tied Samu's record to the second. Is that a tie? Minor improvements include a new setup to rocket into the turbo nozzle area of Noki Bay, a precise rocket shortcut up to the tightrope in Bianca 8, and a spin jump off the watermelons rather than setting up a water slide in Serena 2 Reds, allowing him to get a 103. He untied the record by three seconds a couple weeks later. The ultimate goal, in his eyes, would be at least a 325, and that would almost come to fruition on December 16th. Previously, to pay for the return to airstrip, people would awkwardly collect coins in the main sewer section. Instead, Stelzik entered this sewer after exiting Corona, then collected the line of 10 coins en route to box game. Reminder that your total coins carry over after collecting a Delfino Shine. With only one death in Gelato 1 Reds, Stelzik managed to get a 326.35. But that wouldn't be the last record of 2013. Samurai Man was getting pretty burnt out from his push for a sub-130 any percent time, and wanted to keep his rival in check. After a quick warm-up run, he went on to set a record with the very next attempt. However, this wouldn't come without some adversity. From Pianza 4 onwards, Samu experienced what is referred to as sound glitch, only known to happen on the Japanese version. No, not the music glitch, dude. NTSCJ is version 1.0 of Sunshine and has notoriously buggy audio. Shine Git cutscene music goes missing and never comes back until you hard reset your console. The Red Coin Secret music also goes missing, but there are two other side effects that are hazardous for speedruns. The game has a rare chance of crashing whenever you collect a Shine Sprite, and whenever you die, the respawn load time takes over 5 seconds longer. This was an unavoidable time loss on the intentional death used in Corona Blues. Luckily, when it was all said and done, his game didn't crash. Where's the crash, dude? I was waiting for that. <laughs> At the tail end of January, Stelza got the record back from Samu once more with a 325.46. I don't have much to comment on, except this run had some serious upwarp swag on Gelato 1. <laughs> Gelato Beach skip? Oh my god. Toval would completely shake up any percents on February 21st with the discovery of Gelato Beach skip, or GBS. While the time save was obvious for any percents, people were initially uncertain as to how it would fit into 120 shines. True, it was definitely advantageous for those playing on non-Japanese versions, since everyone could skip the watermelon now, but for world record contenders already playing on NCSCJ, they simply stuck with Yoshi GBS. An unexpected breakthrough resulted when the unimaginable happened to Snarfy Bobo during one of his runs. No way! Dude. Dude, 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 dude. Somehow, Snarfy Bobo defeated this clamber without using Yoshi. No one had any idea how it was done, and attempts were made to recreate this. But it wasn't until a couple weeks later that it was finally understood by a top-level Japanese player named Yamata. Jumping into the ceiling of any sewer affects Mario's hitbox in a way that leaves two different side effects. Durians launch across the stage with even the lightest of taps, and certain enemies can be killed just by touching them. Most importantly, clambers. Or spiders, as this trick was coined, spider glitch. This saves about 30 seconds from both skipping this extra walking with Yoshi, and easily killing this clamber rather than dealing with the terrible hit detection. Stelzik now collected the sewer coins from Out of Bounds after knocking down Shadow Mario. This negates part of the time you would normally spend waiting for him to run back to the statue. He achieves two more records, a 325.27 on March 25th and a 324.40 on May 13th, the first record to actually use Spider Glitch. The slower progression of 120 shines around this time was largely a result of the any percent surge that GBS caused. It was easy to believe that the best 120 route had been solved. Well, the same man who solved Spider Glitch would prove that this sentiment couldn't be further from the truth. Yamata had been on the cusp of world record times in both any percents and 120 shines for a while. In June of 2014, he made his debut in the spotlight using a unique route that visited Piazza Village before going to Pinna Park. 
This doesn't make any sense until you factor in something I haven't even discussed yet. Whenever you enter the pipe to go to Pianta Village before you've unlocked Pinna Park, it doesn't play the animation for entering the pipe. He saved a good chunk of time from skipping 10 of these animations, but still had to revisit Pianta Village later in the run for the 100 coin shine. Most levels were still completed in one visit, but he only did Rico episodes 1 through 7 before Corona Blues. To say that Yamato was creative would be an understatement. Yamato finished this run in 3.23.23. This stumped Stelzig for a while, but on July 22nd, he managed to cut a minute off the record. He continued using his own route, since Western players often questioned if Yamato's route was even faster. Stelzig claimed he could see himself getting a sub 3.20 someday, but he was content with his 3.22.29 for the time being. The record remained uncontested for quite some time, since all of the top runners were either focused on any percents or not actively playing. Enter a not-so-top runner, Average Trey. Aka... me. Back in early 2013, 120 Shines was the first category I learned when I picked up Mario Sunshine for a number of reasons. By the time I actually started streaming attempts in mid-2014, I was grinding my ass off to get a sub-330. Paperario and I had a rivalry between who the better American 120 player was, and that rivalry, combined with my passion for playing Sunshine, had me practicing for hours on end. When I smashed that awful sub-330 barrier with a 327, I quickly realized something. I'm 5 minutes off the world record, and only 1 minute off the person who mainly inspired me in the first place. Just as soon as I thought my journey was over, it had truly just begun. In October of 2014, I put in countless hours of practice offline, and streamed attempts whenever I could. My dedication would finally pay off on October 24th. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, world record, suck my dick. That's nice, but let's really analyze this run. For starters, I was still playing on NTSCU. I had no choice but to base a route around the standard GBS setup, and this gave me an idea. By initially doing only two levels required to unlock Corona, I could avoid event cutscenes for the other nine levels by revisiting Gelato later in the run. On top of this, I could easily combine Gelato 8 with the Blender Blue Coin by bringing over two coconuts. This run had a ton of Piazza Village improvements, thanks in large part to a couple members of the good people. Kafalon and Kenny Cola wanted to make the most optimal route possible for 120 Shines, a very ambitious task resulting in completing only one of the levels, Pianta Village. The basis was to obtain more blue coins during Pianta 8 and still catch the second fluff cycle, since each fluff comes around every 23 and a half seconds. Using these improvements to save 18.5 seconds on top of getting the Ramel cycle and the early spray on the Hidden Shine made for a very solid Pianta segment. Oh, and Yoshi Skip was no longer an issue you since the Huff Your Puff setup came around. Thanks, Huff. A German player named Wilco found a peculiar way to avoid the intentional death at the end of Corona Blues. For whatever reason, a save text box and a could not save text box behave a bit differently. Notice how, in both of these clips, I hovered into the blue coin. And watch what happens when I continue to hold the R button. By inserting a memory card into your console, you are granted the ability to continue hovering out of a save prompt. With this knowledge in mind, you can hover into the blue coin, then hover to one of the spires to exit area. This is all because the game doesn't allow you to pause while Mario is airborne. The coconut lady was the last thing I did before trading in my blue coins. It turns out it's impossible to bonk into sewer walls when using the turbo nozzle. Yamata saved a minute on my time merely 10 days later. He made a slight improvement to Rico Harbor by collecting only one of the blue coins over the water in episode 2, then collecting the other blue coin during episode 6. Interestingly, Yamata was the only person to never unlock the rocket nozzle in Miyako Hills, but he instead used Yoshi to gain the necessary heights to reach this bluebird. As always, Yamata's runs had an admirable level of creativity that anyone could learn from. The week-long charity marathon of speedruns, Awesome Games Done Quick 2015, was coming up, and it was planned that Stelzig would be running 120 shines there. In a sudden turn of events, a conflict arose and Stelzig was no longer able to go, so he asked me if I was able to take his place. 
I jumped on the opportunity and convinced my parents to let me fly alone to Herndon, Virginia at the age of 19. This was the main spark of my continued grinding of 120 shines. In this run that I performed a couple weeks after Yamata's record, I included the Piantissimo Goodbye cutscene skip. By standing in this Piantis talking range, you can override Piantissimo's 9 text boxes with the Piantis 2 text boxes. It's kind of an anomaly in that it only works when certain parts of the game are unlocked. Despite a poor beginning, the last hour more than made up for it. That time! <laughs> yes! Man, USA has got this. We got this by the ass. Fast forward three days, and my cockiness would quickly be met with a convincing bop from Lord Stelzig, the first time a sub-320 run had been completed. This was the first 120 Shines record to incorporate Honey Skip, which Stelzig started using ever since he found his setup. Essentially, the Penna Unlock cutscene can be skipped by dying on the same frame that you enter it. Stelzig's run even had exceptionally bad luck on the Fruit Machine in Rico Episode 8, getting the Durian on the 8th try. Every time you hit one of these buttons, you have a 1 in 5 chance of getting a durian, which Yoshi absolutely needs. 120 Shines has the luck factors for many percents with the addition of Fruit Machine, Pinatu Bullet Bills, and the most annoying enemies in the game, Burbs. Delzig reigned supreme, but I still had a marathon run to prepare for. As if it was a belated Christmas present, an exceptional PD Piranha and Bullet Bills came around. That was like 9.5 out of 10 luck. I needed to capitalize on this run. There it is, folks. 317. I skipped 319. I skipped 318. I got 317. And it's not even the Japanese version. What the fuck? I'm a legend. I had no intentions of improving my level route, but I did know one thing. I should probably purchase the Japanese version, which is exactly what I did shortly after AGDQ. I finally experienced what could best be referred to as the JPO penis. On a side note, the timing standard universally changed from console resets to file select to establish an official standard on the new speedrun.com. You may have noticed my inclination to call Pinna Park Episode 8 the worst mission. This level has just always been such an issue as I addressed with Theradel, since the shots always go higher or lower than you intend in a seemingly random way. Well, I wouldn't consider it the worst mission for too much longer, thanks to a finding from Versace V-Man 3000. He uploaded a video on February 5th titled, Straight Shooting Technique for Mecha Bowser, DM Shot 100% Consistent. DM Shot being a discovery from the Dark Musician for the Mecha Bowser fight. This is a technique I found on January 2nd, 2015 for Mecha Bowser that shoots the rockets perfectly straight. What's being done is that I'm holding analog R down entirely, then pressing digital R to shoot the Rocket. This technique works for Pina 8 as well. Enjoy! It was now no longer far fetched to execute Pina 8 in only one roller coaster cycle. Wilco and I labbed a better route for Rico Harbor 100 coins in episode 6. While Yamata did Rico 600s back in 2014, we made updates inspired by a route that Sided Williams and Ice Windowsill made for SMS Bingo. This includes collecting all of the coins over the water and skipping most of the luck based crane coins. I also moved Serena 100 coins to episode 5 so that I could skip more of the annoying torches in favor of more casino coins. 40. After an insanely good Bianco segment, thanks in part to the JPO penis, this run clocked in at 315.22. I don't know how I did it, but there you go, a low 315. Coincidentally, this was the one year anniversary of Gelato Beach Skip. Sided Williams theorized a faster way to handle the linked triangles in Gelato Beach. By obtaining these coins while fighting the Wiggler in Episode 3, it could definitely save some time. We both tested this extensively and came up with a solution, but it was going to be tricky until some further refinements. 
Gamata adapted half of this strategy when he returned to 120 shines in March. He got the second triangle during Wiggler, but handled the first triangle while on the way to the coconut tree for GBS. He had some inventive ways to get blue coins, like the waterfall during Piazza 1, one of the linked X's during Enrico 2 leading into the blooper race entry, and swimming down to this coin in Noki 4 and then entering the loading zone for Ely Mouth Dentist. He reached the first possible fluff cycle in Piazza 8 by getting more blue coins in other episodes, and it turns out this is actually faster. Sorry, Cap and Kenny. He also split up Noki into two segments, leaving three levels for after he traded in blue coins. He ended the run with movement from Noki Bay to Corona Mountain. I thought my lead was pretty safe in this category, but on March 19th, Yamata completed a run of 315.06. Before Discord came Skype, and in early 2015, Skype groups were the medium of communication for the SMS community. At some point, a sub-125 any percent times group was formed, but due to its elitist nature and people just finding it silly, it converted into a new group entirely. The 120 Brotherhood. Consisting of a few individuals who felt that 120 shines deserved more attention, and seeks to further optimize the route. This group was especially active in early March, when members rediscovered the importance of event cutscenes. Dutch J made a lot of useful comparison videos, providing much needed evidence that it's faster to save the extraneous shines in every level for later, apart from Piazza Village. Endkiller's 2012 route may have been lost in the sands of time, but at least people eventually got back on track. So now, I did Piazza in one segment, Rico Gelato, Serena, and Noki in two segments, Pena in three, and Bianco in five. This may seem like overkill, but I would no longer have event cutscenes after collecting a mere 53 shines. Some other interesting additions include handling the linked X graffiti in Rico 1 during the blooper fight to cut out some of the wait time before phase two, and spraying the fire guy during the transition from Noki to Gelato. He has a set location depending on what levels are unlocked, and always runs around this area in post-corona Delfino Plaza. I got a new record with the new route on March 27th. I skipped 314. I skipped 314. Large improvements were made to Serena Beach thanks to an up-and-coming player, Shadow Mario 27. On June 24th, he made a route for 100 coins in Serena 7. While Episode 7 may not have access to the casino coins, SM27 cleverly collects the majority of the Hotel Delfino's blue coins along the way, including the attic, previously done in Episode 8, and three of the four linked pair blue coins. While the 100 coin level itself may have been a bit slower, it significantly cut down on time for episodes 7 and 8. As for the casino blue coins? Well, they could just be collected on the way to both Serena 4 and Serena 4 Reds. All of these changes to Serena Beach are present in a record that Yamata set on July 5th, a 313.02. He adopted some stuff that the 120 Brotherhood came up with, including Piazza in one segment, which is surprising since he knew about the two second pipe entry cutscenes. That's not to say that his creativeness wouldn't shine through, because, well, just watch how he gets these sewer coins. Yeah, and then he led this into Coconut Lady, then backtracked to the sewer coin you would normally get on the way to the islands, and all I'm gonna say is, this is slower. He did have an efficient method of collecting the 10 coins for the airstrip return when leaving from Pinna Park. Oh, and he improved Banana Lady by a good 2 seconds per banana by using precise throws from a closer awning. The Pinna 3 first ship cycle, introduced by Iced Windowsill back in 2012, was later updated by Dutch J. Now, the blue coins in the clam and under the stairs were collected during Pinna 7. This was made even faster by manipulating Shadow Mario to run to the right. Sided Williams suggested collecting the pillar coins in Noki 8 rather than Noki 4, which turned out to be faster by catching the second red coin fish formation. Bianco 1 is the only level that the game intentionally allows you to skip by making the shine for Bianco 2 readily available. It is actually faster to do Bianco 1 later in the run, despite having to scroll all the way from episode 8. Doing Bianca 1 later also meant that I could do Gelato 5 early, and easily resets if the blue burbs were not so kind. 3.12.03... Damn, he saved a whole minute in a second! Yo! What a god! Congrats.
Congratulations. 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 Had this record been 4 seconds faster, I would have returned to any percents as that was the hot category to grind after the recent discovery of early Yoshi go round. In retrospect, I'm glad that I continued with 120 shines because of what happened a couple weeks later. Oh my goodness. <laughs> to quote Cafalon from his SGDQ race, I was playing out of my mind. For a while I knew that sub 310 was possible, but I certainly didn't expect for it to almost happen so soon. I could return to any percent, rest assured that my 310 would remain the record for quite some time. The New Jerseyan Shadow Mario 27 picked up SMS in late 2014. 120 shines was always his main category of interest. He improved at a breakneck rate from a plus 4 hour time in January to a sub 320 only 6 months later. He made a lot of contributions to 100 coin optimizations, like the aforementioned 100 coins in Serena 7, but also 100 coins in Rico 8 and Gelato 3. Gelato 3 actually has fewer coins overall than 2, but saves time purely from the lack of a required cutscene. The ocean blue coins were moved to episode 6, and the coral reef red coins were collected while equipped with the turbo nozzle. After the EYG excitement died down, SM27 got a huge 120 shines PV on October 11th that landed him in second place above Yamata. This put a bit of a scare on me, as I wanted to be the first sub 310, preferably before 2016. How hard could that be though? With only 20 seconds to save, surely that will be manageable. Not to mention, some other optimizations including a better pin of 3 developed by Bouncy Boy, where you ride the first upside down ship cycle to the high up blue coin. Zapiku Kirby found single rocket storage on October 22nd, which had a fair share of uses in 120 shines beyond just the ending of Corona Mountain. Sadly, all of my success with breaking records was equally met with failure and frustration. Dude. Let's get in the castle now. 31019 still stood when winter break came around, despite my best efforts. One mistake can kill any promising run, and it's mentally exhausting when it happens over and over again. What the fuck is this stupid ass game? On December 21st, I was on good pace out of Corona Blues, which was gradually becoming the midway point for a 120 run. Of course, things began to fall apart in Gelato Beach. Then, after some chokes on Rico Hundreds, awful luck on the fruit machine, and falling down the clouds of Corona Mountain, it came down to this. PV, folks. <laughs> it's a new world record. I'm pissed. Needless to say, there was a serious mental block that I had to overcome. Sub 310 would have to wait until 2016. On January 12th, I had another shot at glory, but again, I choked the run in a multitude of ways. It felt like a cruel joke when the run resulted in a 310 flat. I didn't even highlight the livestreamed version of this run purely from disappointment. Fast forward one more month, and I would finally catch a break. Got it? This is it. <laughs> Finally, by five seconds. I may have spent four months saving 23 seconds in a three hour category, but I'd say it was worth it. I don't know why we're flying. I don't know, dude. It's gonna follow your dreams. This is sick. Yamato returned to 120 shines the following month, including most of the new improvements and cleaning up the order in which he did Delfino shines. By this point, every top player was doing Honey Skip on the way to Pena Park. He also included a few modifications, like getting the two M's in Rico 1 in between spraying the linked X's, getting both linked X's in Bianco 5 while waiting for PD to arrive, and opening the ruins in Noki 100 coins by spraying downward from the upper ledge, removing the need to fall down, then wall kick all the way back up. He cut a few seconds off my time on March 29th with a 309.47, but this run had two big deaths plus an overthrown banana to boot. 308 was looking extremely viable. He almost surpassed that goal with an incredible run of 308.05. It's as if removing the onus of sub 310 opens the door to optimizing 120 shines much, much further. So it's mid-2016, and Gelato 4, the Sandbird is born, is still more or less an auto-scroller. This would no longer be the case, a couple days after Zapiku tweeted a demonstration of some Miraka nozzle tech. 
By canceling a rocket with Mario's leaving sidestep animation, you can store as many rockets as you want, which grants the ability to gain infinite height. Yamatsa found the initial Rocket Bird strats for 120 shines on July 8th. Unfortunately, storing rockets on the amorphous clouds was too unpredictable, so he utilized the lower rim of the central column to double rocket storage to the fourth blue coin, as well as the top of the column where the final red coin lies. Improvements were quickly made. Wilco suggested spam spraying the second cloud to expand it, making it easier to get to the third cloud. The second best any percent runner at the time, Nendide, figured out how to skip returning to the lower rim a second time. It turns out that rocket storage can be done from clouds if you're on the very edge. Nendide used a single rocket storage combined with a rocket dive to barely reach the top of the column from the final cloud. Then it dawned on me, if rocket storage was now possible from clouds, why return to the rim of the column at all? I found a way to get from the 3rd to 4th cloud by doing a double rocket storage combined with a rocket dive. Sandburn was now roughly 30 seconds faster. Like I said, Nindide was already one of the top any percent players, so he excelled at 120 shines very quickly. He brought many optimizations to the table, paired with new routing that was developed shortly after Yamata's 308, doing Piazza 1 through 7 early. This once again brings back segmenting Piazza and skips 7 of the pipe entry cutscenes. Entering Corona at a record low of 46 shines, the first half of 120 shines had essentially become glorified any percent. Yamata was on the right track with collecting this underwater blue coin then entering the Noki 4 or 8 loading zone, but Dide took this way further. By using a well-known clip on this slope and a downward zip, the game sets the water's surface level to where Mario jumps out of the zip. This, combined with a momentum spin jump plus wall kick, speeds up the collection of this blue coin by over 10 seconds. He also introduced a precise way to instantly clean off graffiti that's located on the ground. By spam spraying on a specific frame of Mario's ground pound, its precision cannot be overstated, often taking two or three attempts, which still saves time or at least ties normal spraying. One could even say, 120 Shines was finally getting optimized. Only a month after the complete progression of Rocket Bird, Dide achieved a world record time of 3.07.37. But I wouldn't stand for it. I came back to 120 shines in mid-July and used the same route as Dide since Piazza 1 through 7 early was now universally agreed to be good. I did, however, reorder a couple levels out of personal preference, late game Bianco and Serena. This doesn't waste any time, and it gets difficult levels like Bianco 8 and Bianco 3 Reds out of the way much sooner. I also opted to use Dide's underwater blue coin strat much earlier in the run during Noki 4 rather than 8. For the record, I know that Bouncy Boy only intended this tweet to be a well-deserved compliment to Nindide, but it must have still fired me up somehow, because merely four days later I achieved a 306.33. Yes! I felt pretty satisfied after a follow-up tweet from B-Boy and my unreasonably large ego intact. Watch Dide get 305 tomorrow and I'm like, fuck. Follow that claim with a zero, and that would be 100% accurate. Clearly, Nindide took numerous measures toward optimizing the category. He could even implement his mastery of any percent skills, especially in the first half of the run. 120 was gradually becoming a different beast. It increasingly became reliant on riskier strategies, combined with adequate luck conditions. Nindide would go on to dominate any percent, and I went back to the drawing board in 120 shines. I developed a setup for a known accident that can occur when attempting Honey Skip, demonstrated in this May 2015 highlight from Deathline. It's actually possible to grab the blue coin behind this jelly while clipping into the tower, more importantly, without getting stuck in GBJ. It's high risk of getting stuck with low reward of 6 to 8 seconds. On October 15th, I narrowly lowered the record. It's not a 304, but it's something. After a rough start of nearly a minute off my best pace comparison, I brought it back but knew that I should definitely aim for at least a 304 before moving on. Furthermore, Shadow Mario 27 was once again on the cusp of world record, in other words, top 3 was flooded with 305s. The following week I clutched out a run with respectable early game, including Ramel Cycle. YOLO. Super YOLO. I did it! Oh my f Break, dude. Reclaiming a healthy lead on the competition, I took another break from the category.
On January 19th, 2017, Psychonauter made a groundbreaking forum post on speedrun.com. Back in 2015, Dan Salvato, famously known for speedrunning Yoshi's Story, created practice codes that included both level selection and position codes. Psychonauter updated these codes with additions like infinite lives, FMV skips, and dialogue skips. One update in particular would be paramounts to 120 shines, disabling blue coin flags. This means that the blue coin counter will always remain at zero. A level containing blue coins can be practiced over and over again without the hassle of resetting the console or pretend collecting the coins. As early as 2013, speculation began over how far 120 shines can be pushed. I don't get, think sub 320 will happen anytime soon. This theoretical best time gradually lowered by convenient increments of 5 minutes as the years went by. No, sub 3 is not possible. We gotta find at least a minute worth of new strats probably. Cause it'll happen someday, we just don't know how soon. The classic shit post is sub 3 possible, was actually beginning to look somewhat plausible. Psychonauter's codes were just one essential ingredient for pushing 120 shines to its limits. It would also require discovering a handful of small time savers and a lot of perseverance. This became a long-term goal of mine. Fetch8763 developed faster pachinko machine movements, and the evolution of the pachinko level alone is pretty remarkable. What started as an impressive feat by simply getting every coin one at a time without dying, turned into cheating a bit to get some coins from the back, then including some extra hovering time savers, and then finally, obtaining everything from the front with well-timed hovers. I adopted the fetch movement when I returned to 120 shines, as well as some other small time savers, like spraying this X while ledge grabbing to quickly get to the Lynx coin, and doing a double rocket store dive to barely reach the Pianta 8 cloud at the risk of a rogue fluff. Despite the new practice codes, 2017 got off to a slow start. Once again, Shadow Mario 27 was contending the record when he got a 304.44 on February 4th. But it took me another two months of grinding to set a pretty weak record of 304.11. 303 was honestly long overdue, and this run lost over a minute to luck on Pena 2. What? It was also determined in late March that doing Pena 2 reds early would save 5 shine selection scrolls without adding any event cutscenes. In other words, 2 seconds. Another interesting use of the rocket nozzle came into play, rocket rollouts. They command fairly strict timing, and you must hold the A button during the rollouts to gain substantial height. This saves time in a handful of places, like Sandbird, Gelato Hundreds, and Bianco 8. It's basically a faster way to clear a large horizontal gap. I found a way to make a very obscure trick known as Kenny sliding useful. When traveling back to get a fruit to Yoshi and Bianco 100 coins, I initiate a Kenny slide on the steep slope under this wall, then do a rollout fruit throw at Yoshi. Pretty neat. With my lack of performance during this period, there was no doubt that Shadow Mario 27 would rise to the occasion. There were three distinct points I've mentioned throughout this video in which he was just shy of the record. He often dealt with inconvenient hurdles, like extensive hours working in his brother's food truck, or experiencing hands pain from prolonged playing. But at last, SM27 would achieve a world record time of 3.03.40 on May 11th. I know, this is long overdue. A common theme in the rivalry between Shadow Mario and I is that he typically had substantially better early game than me. No, seriously. Take a look at this comparison to his PB versus the actual world record. I kept up the pace by coming a few frames short of tying SM27, but the following day, Shadow Mario lowered his time by 13 more seconds. He even had a death on Sandbird and Rico 4 Reds. Yeah, if I didn't die, it would have been 301. <laughs> This may be shocking to you, but SM27 is to Mario Sunshine as Punkation is to Mario 64, in that he's a bit of an anime head. Now gather around, children, as I recall a very important time in Mario speedrunning history, when the war on anime was won. Punkation sniped the 120 star record in Mario 64 at 0200 hours on June 3rd. The anime nation was in full force, having captured the 100% records in their respective games. But lo and behold, the Red Baron of Trinidad, Chizo 5, fired back with a 139.28 and 120 star at the tail end of the same day. And this news was rallied to my stream as I was two hours into a promising attempt of at 120 shines. I faced some hardships. But on this historical day, 3D Mario speedrunning was saved from the anime overlords. Bible Thumb 7.
Okay, seriously, how did I survive that? I pulled off a riskier ending to Corona Blues, originally theorized by Paperario. Something else that Paperario actually used, but was criminally overlooked until Kenny Cola brought it up one day, was a 4 second time saver in the return to airstrip. The last U-turn of coins can be cut out by precisely weaving between the buoys. Zapiku made a task of Serena 8s that included a new way of clipping through the wall, Bananaless. An eventual speedrun friendly method was developed and showcased in an individual level run from Fetch. It uses a hover cancelled camera storage to grab the locked doorknob from the other side. Shadow Mario 27 found yet another improvement to Noki Bay 100 coins that involves backtracking through one of the tunnels. It should go without saying, but life changing runs can come out of seemingly nowhere, and when they do, it's pretty magical. This run was so ahead of its time that he not only skipped 302, but nearly skipped 301 in the process. So that just happened. <laughs> that was an amazing run. He even faced an extremely trollish fluff during Pianta 8. I'd be damned if there exists any better evidence that anime splits make you faster. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, Shadow Mario would lead the cause toward this category's most highly sought milestone. The feasibility of a 259 escaped the realm of theoretical and to possible. However, it would require a pretty stoic mentality, brushing off mistakes, mental endurance, and facing the pressure of once in a blue moon pace. More improvements surfaced, like a better setup for GBS coconuts originally seen in Yamata's 30333. He used a short hover to pop the other coconut up to him. The first coconut was thrown to a slightly different location, from which a calculated throw would place it in an ideal spot to perform GBS. Bianco Episode 8 quickly evolved over the span of a few weeks, with a combination of findings from Shadow Mario, Nindide, Sided Williams, and myself. Yamata flaunted his ability to quickly adapt by coming 5 seconds off the record on September 8th. <laughs> With competition in close proximity, Shadow Mario quickly responded with a new record a few days later. Better Sandbird entrance? Exceptional Pinna 8. And in a sudden twist of events, when attempting to revisit Rico 2 for the hidden blooper race shine, an accidental Rico 3 re-entry, nearly 30 seconds lost to a miss menu, but ultimately, a new world record and the first free flat. If this was 327, I probably would have taken a break. Contents with a lower 3 flat. Hmm. A reasonable statement in the heat of the moment, but awfully hard to believe. Unfortunately, Shadow Mario began experiencing health issues. Focusing on a CRT screen began to induce seizures and headaches. Consequently, he had to take an extended break from SMS. Yamata also gave up on 120 shines, so now, it seemed like the onus of 259 was entirely on me. At the last possible moment of 2017, I finished a run of 301.25. Failing to meet my arbitrary deadline, I continued playing to also prepare for a marathon run at the upcoming AGDQ 2018. Shadow Mario did, however, make a gradual return to 120 shines in late November. He considered investing in some gunners to help minimize headaches, but opted for some readily available yellow tinted glasses instead. Apparently the glasses helped tremendously, and he was able to successfully work his way back into doing attempts on a regular basis. 2018 rolls around. In case you haven't noticed, my greatest rival also holds the name of Mario Sunshine's antagonist. From my perspective, this couldn't have been more fitting. The stakes were high, and it was truly an all-out battle.
Shadow Mario and I finally included a trick that's actually been known for years, referred to as the DeLorean. It's possible to skip talking to the Chuckster by using a precise banana clip. It's called the DeLorean because of how Mario instantly warps to the floor when this clip is performed. Winter break ended, free time was becoming increasingly scarce, but I never fully gave up hope, and knowing that my 30125 had an extraordinarily bad King Boo with 7 extra cycles is what mainly kept me going. Allow me to run you through my gameplay and my feelings during the run of my life. Every attempt starts out the same way, going in blind with the thought that it could be the run, but never actually expecting it to be the run. Expecting to PB is only setting yourself up for disappointment. It's been said that a 120 shine run doesn't truly begin until Pinna 2. The run had some semblance of potential, I had my best pace ever coming out of Rico, and the nerves really began to set in. I knew the implications. This is always an interesting situation. It's like, I know I gotta... I gotta do it, man. I avoided many of my PB's mistakes. The fruit machine was relentless, and what was an amazing run was suddenly in dire straits. The durian came after seven tries. The chances of breaking three were dicey. A 2.59.57 best possible time, the odds were not in my favor. Now I have to do fast Corona, and I had to knock a goof by Bowser. It came down to Bowser, which, guess what, has a random chance of three second time loss between hitting each blast zone. The green goop in the tub erratically splashes onto the stage, and all I could do was pray that it wouldn't hit me. Well, it must have been destiny, because I, Average Trey, somehow pulled it off. Yes! Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I'm out. I simply refused to let Sub 3 slip away to a fruit machine. Despite knowing that I had the potential, I definitely didn't expect to snipe Shadow Mario 27. At the end of the day, it's never a matter of who seems to deserve a record more, but whoever can clutch out what few opportunities they get. Shadow Mario got burnt out shortly after and shifted his focus to other categories. 259.58 is currently where the record stands, but is 120 shines dead? Hell no. Sooner or later, we may see a push further into Sub-3 territory from Nanashi, a Japanese player who came merely two seconds off the record about two months before the release day of this video. Some future routing ideas are still on the table. This includes what I like to call Jelly Skip 2.0, proposed by Sided Williams, in which you rocket into the blue coin from below, then rocket into Pianta Village for a much faster level re-entry. Combine this with the original Jelly Skip, plus a lily pad secret entry from Flooded Delfino, and this would cut out the Yoshi movement around Delfino Plaza entirely. Shadow Mario figured out that a previously known softlock wouldn't softlock as long as you're fast enough. I'm referring to collecting the beach shine immediately after landing the final hit on the Gelato Piranha Plant. Perform this too slowly, and the game will... softlock. And so, that's pretty much how the history of 120 shines unfolds. Only time will tell what the future of this category holds. From an origin shrouded in mystery and innovation, to skillful players trading records on periodic rotation, 120 shines still has room to grow and is far from dead, as knowledge of new discoveries and developments goes widespread. This category isn't reserved to some SMS elite, but to any speedrunner wanting something a bit more complete. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I've been Average Trey. Peace.